for Heaven by Rowan Ricardo Phillips. Rowan Ricardo Phillips' second collection of poems pushes off from his debut, The Ground, by looking out and off toward the many heavens we find in our midst. The heaven of the natural world, large and silent and sublime, the heaven of ecstatic language and lyric possibility, the heavens of memory and of love, the flawed, finite, deeply familiar heaven of 21st century. In poems of exquisite craft, rich illusion, and nimble intelligence, Phillips creates a gathering ground for glimmers of Homer and Shakespeare, Frost and Stevens. But he casts a wide net, also making surprising use of sources as unlikely as the Wu-Tang Clan and Mel Gibson, and as chastening as the recent preponderance of shootings that have left unarmed blacks dead and their assailants deemed not guilty. This is a book that manages to make something indelible of what we've wrought and lost, and of what we are still desperate to decipher. The truth we'll only know from learning to squint in its direction and poke. We cut school like knives through butter, the three of us, Peter, Stephen, and I, to play just about all the music we knew, which meant that from nine in the morning till Steve's parents, the ever-patient Murtars, would get home from work, I played guitar, Peter played bass, and Steve who'd end up becoming a guitarist by trade when we went separate ways to separate schools in separate states. Steve, at this point, played the drums. We dreamed of power trios and powered our way through song after song, including one Steve and I wrote, like, Hey, Regina, and the lamentably titled String Her Up. Sometimes we tried out some yes, a long hey Joe. The stereo phaser was my signature sound. I'd bend in and out of notes, imply arpeggios only to solo over them, tapped, frowned through anything in a major key, felt my way home on Steve's map of snares, Pete's rope. We'd play an entire Zeppelin album usually the first or second, then stray by chance into the longer, later songs, like bees that float down and drown in a pool. We'd break for lunch and then get back at it, as though we had a gig to get ready for or a demo to cut, the cassette deck rolling its eyes as it whirred round and round. Peter, as is the nature of bassists, held the tunes together, and kept things light. Years later, I assumed he was dead. My Telecaster glares at me at night now, from inside the hard case by my bed. And the calluses on my fingertips have long since softened. The six minute solos at some point became poems. It took two months minimum to make seem seamless. Steve, in the meantime, thrived in the triangle, became Stevie, married Emily. Pete, I know less about. He posts on Facebook cheerfully about the light the great light that glows in all of us, sends the occasional white dove in the occasional shared shot, a sun resting on a cloud like a pearl in its mooted gray shell. Nostalgia courts me. I'm nearing 40. We were boys. And I should just let us be. But nostalgia spreads quickly through the ashes of our youth, making ferned fires out of blue beliefs. When the dark would come, we'd show each other our blisters, the painful white whorls peeling, our red palms upwards, 
outstretched and unread.